during the induction phase, you have a lot of different things that plays a role. Memory, the language, cognitive bias, we'll be back on that next time. Now I want to focus on one word, perception. Perception definitely is somewhere in this induction phase, but again, we need to be more precise to give a clear distinction between perception and intuition and other things. So let's propose a definition. A definition, it's, it's my definition. To perceive is to try to match some elements of the outside world with existing mental models. So to perceive is not just to open the window and look what's, uh, what's uh, outside. No, no, no. To perceive it's an effort. It's made of four elements. It's to try, there is an effort, to match some elements of the outside world, because you don't see the world completely, with existing mental models. Now, let's use the definition with some examples, just to illustrate because you perceive all the time, so it's worth to understand exactly how, how it works. First situation, what do you perceive? Say 212, not a big deal, and even wider question. Imagine you live in New York. You could say, hey, this is my phone number, at least the three first figures of my phone number. And you see, even with a simple example like that, it's not obvious. By the way, do you know why New York has 212? And what, I think Chicago has 213 and Los Angeles 321 or something like that. Why? Because 80 years ago, there was a design in the United States to organize the phone system. But at that time, you had to dial a tuk 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 with wheel like that. So if you have a two, it tuk tuk, it goes very fast. If you get a nine, tuk 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 tuk, it takes a lot of time. So large cities like Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York agreed to take the small numbers. Well, that's another story. Next exercise. What do you perceive? Probably you see a broken line. Now look. I will change a little bit in the reality of this picture, a little bit. I just will add two dots, nothing. And suddenly you can change your perception completely. You can read a word. Can you read a word? Minimum. Minimum is written. You imagine the power of perception with nothing in reality, two dots, you move from a broken line to a word. It shows that there is like an interaction with a lot of energy included between the world and yourself. Next. Can you read that? To me and for my friends, this is so obvious. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It's a record produced by the Beatles, 68 or 69. And for us, we, did, we don't need the other letters. We see it immediately. But maybe if you are in the 20s and the 30s, maybe you cannot read it. Just to show that it's an interaction. The way you are is a condition. It influences the way you see. Next. Can you read that? Not easy. Not easy. Now I'll give you an information. This is the name of a city. A city I just mentioned three minutes ago. At least the main island, Manhattan. And now we say, yes, this is Manhattan. And probably you can see Manhattan because in your mind, you have a mental model about Manhattan like skyscrapers, the skyline organized like that. And you can have many, many examples. The next is a bit more difficult. It's a word, both in French and in English. I'll give you the answer. It's science. 
But now, even when you know it is science, I'm not sure you can read it. If you want to read it, maybe you can take your screen and put it a bit with an angle or maybe remove your glasses, I don't know, or close your eyes, not completely, and suddenly you see signs. Why it's so difficult? Because since we are little boy or girl, we used to focus on blacks. And here, in this particular case, you need to focus on white. So this is not easy to perceive. It's just an example, and but that's the way it works. When you have in front of you a competitor or your client, why do you, what do you perceive? You have to obey the same law, the law of, of perception. Look at the next one. To, just to illustrate an additional point. If I show you this, you say, this is a line. So far, you cannot add anything. But now, Look what we're going to do. I will add more information. I will add more information and I will ask you, what do you see? So, next step. At this stage, you have this feeling you want to organize it. It's a bit strange to you. What's this? And we're all the same. You want to organize. What is it doing? And you come with hypotheses. And so far, you can have a lot of hypotheses. You can, okay, he draws a, a stairs, or maybe he draws um, the map of a city or the, the plan of a house. Many, many different hypotheses. And so far, you cannot, you cannot be sure of anything. Let's move forward. Now, imagine you thought I was drawing a labyrinth, a maze. Yeah, yes, he's doing a labyrinth, definitely. But in this particular situation, now you can have like suddenly a new idea, a new hypothesis, letter H, engraved with some light on the side. Hey, you see letter H? Yes, this is a possibility, not certainty. Look now, two options. Either you were convinced I was drawing a labyrinth, a maze, and you're happy. Yes, I got it. But imagine your hypothesis was letter H. You're really angry on me because you don't understand. If I go backwards a minute, if you really convince this is letter H, you will hate the next step. And this shows the way we build models. At each step, we build hypotheses and we test the hypothesis. And of course, we want to confirm we are right. And this is a metaphor. This is a metaphor. It explains, it shows that a new information symbolized by the last line will be accepted or rejected a bit in function of what it is, but much more in function of the hypothesis. You think it's letter H, you hate this line. You think about labyrinth, you will love this line. And that explains a lot. I'm sometimes surprised by mistakes people make. And even genius make mistakes. We will see that in the fifth lecture. Why do we make mistakes? Most of the time, people are convinced, I didn't know. I didn't have the information. I don't think so. Most of the mistakes are made. Not because an information is missing, but because of the way this information is processed. Said not important, really important. A bit in function of the information, but much more in function of the present hypothesis people have in their mind.